our Bake Off tutorials. As you can see, we are joined by a very special guest. Say hello to Andrew Smith. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Andrew, would you like... Please, no applause. No applause. <laughs> um, Andrew, would you like to give us a wee intro of why you've joined us today and what baking experience you have? Sure. So um, I, I was on Bake Off a while ago, back in 2016, last year at the BBC, but I got through to the final, which was fantastic. But as well as that, um, before I left to go to university, I was a member of CBYO. So I was a flautist um, in the woodwind section um, and I had a wonderful time. And uh, yeah, that's the kind of connection Tara and Adam reached out and that's why I'm here today. So yeah. orchestra plus baking, it's like a dream combination. It is a good mix. So oh. um, this is our tutorial for cakes. It's our final, it's very exciting. now. It's very casual cake competition, but we're getting into it nonetheless. And for this final, anyone who's competing or just in it for fun is going to be baking cake before our Zoom call on Friday. So a little bit different to what we've done so far. And we will be sending out a few recipes that you can make yourselves if you don't have one, but you are absolutely welcome and in fact encouraged to choose your own recipe, one that you've maybe made before or something you want to try out, make it at home, Prep it for decoration if you want to. So for example, I brought a cake along today that I've pre like base iced. I don't really know how to describe this kind of, I've crumb coated it and then I've put another layer on top of it and I will be embellishing it today. Um, that's what I'm doing. Adam is currently assembling his cake. Very nice. And I think that Andrew will probably be judging us while we do so. Yeah, we'll I have no cake in front of me, <laughs> so I'm here in a, in a judging slash passive aggressive commentary capacity. Definitely. <laughs> Next Friday, we will all be getting onto the call together. Andrew will also be joining us near the end of that call to help us pick a winner. And there are three lucky prizes to be won. Yes, our um, first prize is a £30 voucher of your choice, along with a CBY bake off apron personalised with your name. And second prize is a piping kit, and third prize is uh, one of our uh, special uh, CBY uh, mugs. So Andrew, <laughs> did you did you play in the orchestra while Mr McBride conducted? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Mr. Mr. McBride and uh, Mr. Briscoe, not to be crossed. Um, yeah, yeah, they were, they were, they were features while I was there as well. What kind they, of? They hate me say this. They're as old as the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of experience was that for you? What, what were they like? Um, uh, I mean, it was. So it was good for, I mean, I was very different. I was a bit more timid then and was kind of very scared to do it up front. So I remember one particularly scarring experience where I think we, all we were- one. We all have one. Yeah, we were we were doing, it was the Shostakovich. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember which number it was. It was an overture, but it's the one which has a really quick piccolo and flute part. Festival and it got to the point where he was just, yeah, it was the festival overture. We're playing exactly. it this year. We're we playing it this year. year. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's my, my alarm on my phone as if I didn't have enough, you know, trauma. But um, there was a very tricky flute bit. And I remember him just like reducing the scope of who was playing. And it's like just woodwind. And it was like just the flutes. It was like just the first flutes. It's like, <laughs> and then it was like you stand it. So I had to like stand up. We just had to play the line individually. And oh man, if ever there was kind of, a drive to practice but apart from that it was very good in general we we were a touring year as well because i was only in cbyo for one year mm -hmm. before i left um for uni uh, but we got to go to italy and slovenia which was amazing Ooh, um nice we got to get highlight. yeah i'm gonna get started decorating this i don't really know what i'm gonna do Julie, make sure make sure your cameras we've got a good yeah. a good angle <laughs> yeah that's it i was gonna go with like little like wee little hearts that go up and across and then back down quite small and then kind of like so they go like diagonally down but then straight down across if you know what i mean yeah yeah what what nozzle are you using i'm using just a little round nozzle on this for the hearts it's just a little oh, round. nice yeah, yeah um and then for i was going to do like a little border as well and maybe once i transferred over to actual cake stand i might do some little ones on the bottom if i have any space yeah. For icing left, and that's the same colour pink. Okay. 
It's very like simple, you know, like it's very minimal. Not, you, I, I'm hearing lots of down selling Tara, whereas it's <laughs> looking very neat and very professional. So, <laughs> And then I've also got some gold luster, which I will spritz on and some little pink sprinkles, which I perfectly actually color matched. I didn't even mean to. So I'm quite proud of myself. Humble, enough. humble brag. Humble. Well, let, let's talk in more icing, Tara. Uh, oh. You know, let's let's see. We're yeah. gonna have a bit of a bit, bit of bake off pressure here to get the. Uh, get the... I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start in the middle with a little. Heart. And what what are you doing, Adam? I saw lots of orange um, bits being chopped. Yes, in. our Peter has broke our our grater has broken. So instead of finely grating the orange, I am finely chopping it. Uh, <laughs> same same mean? difference. Yeah, same. So uh, I'm doing a orange buttercream to go on the cake and I've made some orange and cheese pine cream as well. So I'm gonna oh, nice. a little bit of the top and make some little tiny oranges. Oh wow, okay. Oh gosh. A, a, tri a, a triple theme of orange. Yes. <laughs> a bit Adam, too much orange possibly. But no. It's not particularly a strong flavour in the rest of the tea. We hopefully make up for it a little bit. And so when it comes to cakes, Tara, like what would you say would be your like top tip for someone who's like not made one before or is a bit unfamiliar what's your kind of like go-to rule Ooh, first i would say use like a simple recipe so if you're like ever looking for a really reliable recipe i'd use like a bbc good food one um or like a mary berry one they seem to be like quite straightforward um another one is definitely don't over mix and leave flour to the end if you can and as we've already said, don't open the oven while they're in the oven. That would probably be my biggest one. Yeah. Well, what about you? Yeah, I mean, all, all of those. I mean, I always say just weighing out carefully. Um, mm. They say that, you know, cooking, cooking is an art. Baking is a science. So it really small differences in the measurements work. Whereas if you're making something savory, you can often just correct as you go along, add yeah. stuff take stuff away when it comes to baking you've kind of got to precisely measure at the beginning because once it's in the oven its fate is sealed That's and you so can't really do anything at that point i never thought about that before that is actually so very true that cooking is just like i improvise i cook all the time but i would never dream of just changing a cake recipe without googling it first yeah 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 and it's you know it's it's chemistry at the end of the day it's everything in a recipe has a role. It's interesting, I'm writing a, an online show for the science, Northern Ireland Science Festival that's going on in a few weeks and yes. it's all about the, the science of sugar and the different uh, roles it plays in a recipe because it's, no, it's not just about sweetness in a cake and you can, you can kind of experiment at home and just omit ingredients or just reduce the amount of ingredients to directly see the impact and yeah. sugar, sugar is amazing. It, it, it serves a host of purposes. Like one of the other things it does is it it's what makes your cake moist because sugar loves to kind of grab moisture from the atmosphere and it's the sugar content in a cake that keeps it moist and then as well it helps preserve the cake and um, when it comes to things like sorbets and ice creams the more sugar you add the softer it sets in the freezer because its freezing point goes down so there's a whole kind of texture thing that comes in with certain types of confectionery as well when it comes to sugar so it's not just sweetness it's a kind of wonder material which is why if you're ever trying to do sugar replacements in a cake it's not just about replacing the sweetness you have to try and recreate some of the other properties that the sugar gives it so it's a bit of a wonder material when it comes to baking that is so interesting and do you know why i love that science because my mum who's a dentist is constantly having sugar in cakes and i'm always telling her don't have it don't reduce it because it's not just about the sweetness and now I'm going to use that against her. That's brilliant. I would have thought she would have liked to keep the sugar high because it keeps her in business. Oh true, but not when we're making it at home. <laughs> <laughs> Another chance to sharpen the drill. Absolutely. No, she loved that. The like question that I probably get asked the most is, you know, why like do you think people are naturally good at baking or do you think that um you know i can get it right first time and i always kind of compare it to the whole kind of painting analogy it's just kind of like any skill or any muscle like the more you do it um the better you're going to get and you've got to be willing to fail the first time like if you pick up a paint brush you're not going to paint the masterpiece the first time you kind of got to, got to lower your bar and then just learn from the experience and it's the same 
people will often buy a baking book and will try a really complex multi-level recipe and then say ah well i can't bake it was a nightmare and of course it is because there's loads of new stuff in there whereas if you choose something simple even if it goes slightly wrong you can kind of improve for the next time there is there is a bit of a problem because like on instagram and everything everything's so picturesque and beautifully you know edited or really clean edges there's kind of this social media pressure for everything to look perfect or unrealistic standards especially i mean loads of bake-off alumni are very guilty of it of just people behind the scenes will be tweaking with something for half an hour and hour to get it looking just right for the instagram shot but then it kind of gives this completely misleading view of what baking is like i mean 90 percent, well maybe not 90 percent, but like the majority of stuff that I make is just for me and friends and it never goes near social media and I've deliberately tried to do that because there's a lot of this um here's my picture perfect cake with a picture perfect cross section and if you don't achieve that then it's somehow a failure but yeah it's kind of lost touch a little bit with the fact that the joy is in the eating and the sharing and just the the creating as a process we were actually gonna ask you see on Bake Off when they say like 10 more minutes do they actually mean it uh, mm, so some of it is TV magic, so we we get real time calls and then they have some which are, if they were busy doing something else, they have to film them at a time that isn't right. So sometimes when they're saying half an hour left, the time that they said that wasn't exactly half an hour just because they needed to film it in a certain part of the tent. Um, but we get exactly the amount of time that they tell us, so we get no more, no less. Sometimes some of the reactions that you see near the end is just edited to make it seem like it was more of a rush at the end than it might have been. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It, I, I still laugh when it comes on the TV because you get a bit protective over it and you still think, oh, that's the tent I was in. I was in there once. And you kind of have to pinch yourself and be like, oh yeah, that did happen. That was, that was something uh -huh. that, um, yeah, Definitely. many moons ago now, but it's... Yeah, um, would you have a lot of early starts on it? Oh yeah, so yeah. so say for instance the first week, a typical filming day you might start at 6am and then you'll probably wrap at 9 or 10 at night on set. So you're on set probably between 6 in the morning and 9 or 10 at night just because they've got to do so many interviews um, and there's so much judging to get through because it probably takes around 10 minutes to judge everyone's bake individually at the end. So at the beginning when there's 12 of you, that's pretty much like two hours just of judging right kind of sat on a stool looking nervously up at the front so it's it's quite a big delay right okay um and they are but fantastic fun yeah and they would usually only use like a little bit of that judging in the in the real thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you'll only you'll only see i mean the rule that we were told was they'll for every hundred hours of footage that they have in the tent only one of those will you know make it into a final episode Right. I have covered this with messy hearts and I'm not going to pipe a border. Just around that's the very nice. How are you getting on, Adam? What's um, the status? I have a question for you. My butter cream has got quite thick. What would be the best way to not make it that way? Oh, are you having trouble whisking it? Yeah, it's just a lump. I don't know how I'm going to be able to spread it onto the actual cake. Right. Have you mixed it with the icing sugar? Are, icing that, sugar are you in a cold kitchen? Uh, not particularly, no. The butter was softened. Ooh. I've left it out all day to soften. Like. What have you put in it so far, Adam? Um, 150 grams of butter, 300 icing sugar, and the orange peel. I would add a, like a tablespoon and a half of milk. Okay. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then I'd give it like five second increments in the microwave just until it's lightly spreadable. Okay. It's looking pretty. It's looking pretty good from here. Do you want a piping bag tip, Tara? Yes, please. So when you're holding a piping bag, if you hold it that way, you maybe get slightly less control over the pressure. So what you the the proper way. This isn't to say that it's like the wrong way, but between your thumb and your first finger is where you should pinch the end of the bag, and you basically use that to pinch and then do the rotation to close it. And then you use your other, your other hand should just be a positioning hand, so there shouldn't be any pressure coming from your other hand whatsoever. That's just a fine position. 
almost like a kind of a robot where you've got the pressure over here and you just keep on cranking it down as you go through the mixture so you keep rotating pressure with the top hand the bottom hand to position and then you can kind of it works for any nozzle any size of bag that's fantastic thank you very much let's see i um have to say i was having a wee look on your website yesterday and i saw the niffler bread and i thought it was so cool just so neat i really want to try it now um that was quite funny because um that was like part of a branded thing to do with the release of the fantastic beasts on blu-ray but um because it in like the wizarding world jk rowling gets to basically sign off on everything so i had to send that recipe and it had to get like signed off by her to be allowed to film the video just because she has control over everything in the harry potter empire that's so crazy and did she like immediately say yes or did you have to change anything that all happened behind closed doors <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I, I I didn't have to change a thing. It was great. It looked really really cool. I thought it was so adorable. <laughs> they were oh, those those things were a complete nightmare for me because I had to try and work out how to uh, how to make it look as much like a niffler as possible because we were running it as part of this bloggers workshop, and that must have been like version sixteen of the niffler because the earlier ones looked like rats or moles or <laughs> something that had fallen from a height on a building onto the pavement you know it was all grim so i mean well yeah. the final the final product was incredible <laughs> yeah and obviously you're a scientist an engineer very stem centered in your kind of daily work and there are a couple of people in the orchestra who are thinking about it and they're just wondering sort of have you any tips or advice or sure i mean well i'm huge engineering fan i've worked in engineering for about um eight years now but um i got into it just because i was curious about how things work um and i wanted to i quite enjoyed solving problems math and physics happened to be a pretty good subject so i mean if you're applying for engineering i'd say um just try and keep that curiosity and when it comes to interviews and stuff i'd say this is kind of true across the board especially in science subjects it's not about having the right answer it's about showing your thought process so when i was interviewed it was almost deliberate that they try and kind of see where your you know limit of knowledge was and then push you a little bit further to try and get you thinking out loud so it's always a good idea even if you feel like you're stuck or there's something you don't know just kind of talk about what you do know and kind of say why you're giving certain answers or why you're going in a certain direction um because it's it's not it's not a test. It's not like you say something and then they're silent. Interviews are often meant to be kind of conversations. So you'll give a bit of an answer. If they're hoping for something else, they might give you more of a steer and it's kind of a bit of a two-way conversation. So that was really helpful. When someone told me to kind of just treat them like that, it was a little bit easier. Um, and just read, read around your subject as well. There's so many great, um, like, um, popular science books now there's an amazing one called by Roma Agraval called Built which is a kind of pop science book all about structural engineering in the world around us it's fantastic she's a friend of mine um there, there's some brilliant ones depending on what your area of interest is undoubtedly there's going to be some nice thing that shows that you're interested and have read around the subject not just what's on the school curriculum yeah and it's really more than to see how they would be able to teach you than how much you already know is it then? Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. Well, I mean, it's, it's funny because I, I was interviewing someone for our team last week uh, in work. And even now, I kind of use the same principles as I was interviewed that I'm not interested in if they can remember something that they were either taught at university or school, like by rote. I want to see how they think. So showing them something unfamiliar, seeing where their brain goes, seeing if they can join the dots, seeing if they can interpret information. Those are the things that I'm interested in rather than something that they've memorized, which this sounds terrible but at school everything is pretty much about just memorizing a lot of stuff for exams so like chemistry a level that was just memorizing stuff that becomes much less useful later in life and it's more just about where to go to find the information who to talk to and then building an argument and solving the problem is is way more important so um i actually had a question for you transferring it from this to here what i would normally do is I'd put a cake border or a cake card at the base 
and I'd stick that to the base with a bit of buttercream and then a bit of buttercream on top of that. So then when it comes to moving it, I've got a solid base to shift. That's so clever. Never thought of But considering they haven't done that. Um, my second thing would be to put a little bit of parchment underneath that I could slide off. But I know we haven't also done that. So that leaves with the kind of, yeah, your, your leveraging operation. Okay. I just, I'd, I'd always score all the way around the base first of all, just so it doesn't rip any buttercream. And then I'd um, do the old, the old cradle. Ah, oh, see, you got it sorted. Yes. Done, Good. Adam, how's your, is your icing? Just on, but it just looks awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> Show us, Adam, it's okay. Yeah, it's not the best. It, oh, it looks fine. It's really nice. It's a naked cake. They're really trendy. I'll just put through the taste over the uh, presentation. I'm okay with it being messy there because I'm about to pipe around it. So like, I'll probably do like little just dollops with like alternating these two because I'm running out of it. And then no one will be able to see. I, I don't think anyone's going to mind if they get a slice of that, Tara. <laughs> They're very different styles, which I actually really like because Adam's is like rustic, aesthetic. Orange and like... Just, orange. Just orange. But orange is such a nice flavour, honestly. I have never in my life it. before decided to make an orange cake and I had forgotten that I actually had to make a cake for this evening. And so this morning at 9 o'clock I uh, ran off to Tesco's in the car, uh, desperately trying to find the bits and pieces that we'd run out of. Um, <laughs> so hence why it's sort of quite last minute-ish. That's alright, that's in the bake-off spirit, isn't it? Absolutely. I was going to ask Anna, or Andrew, um, do you have any valuable uni experiences? Like, what's your favourite memory from university? I remember it being an intense kind of experience because you're kind of, you got to find out your own way of working yeah. in a way. I mean, I, I, I really feel for people who've had to, to go through the uni experience this year, you know, not having the usual social stuff and being a lot more kind of isolated at home. I think that's really difficult. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I just, I had a wonderful time music wise. I, because when, when I, I went off to Cambridge and there was a lot of much better flautists than I, uh, basically. So I applied for some of the major orchestras, didn't get in because there was people who'd already done diplomas and who were studying music. Yeah. So then I tried to apply to some of the other, like the, there was a jazz orchestra, didn't get into that because they were oversubscribed with flutes again. So I kind of, um, changed direction and went into choral singing because I'd always done a bit of singing and yeah. then joined one of the chapel choirs there and that's something that I've actually um, continued so I still sing in a chamber choir um, where I live in Derby and it's something I've kind of continued with but the the, the flute has taken a bit more of a back seat actually good old, um, good old Mr Douglas he he was my teacher all the way through school and we kind of loosely keep in touch um, but he'd be so disappointed that I hadn't kind of kept it up. But, um, you know, things things change. I, I enjoy the singing. At some point, I might get back into kind of orchestras and bands. My flute ability has definitely gone down over the years. I occasionally take it out again. Um, That's but lovely. I guess the, the, the baking and the singing has risen more to the surface. Uh, that's lovely. No, absolutely. And I think that's definitely something I'm quite nervous of. I... And I think Adam, maybe to an extent, I, I definitely was apprehensive about what to do at university because I've had this long standing relationship with music and I've, I've been doing it since I was like two feet tall, essentially. And um, I, I study law now, but when I was picking and, you know, doing UCAS applications, I was thinking, right, law or music, law or music. And it was something I battled with for ages. I applied to both. It's difficult. You've kind of got to create your own path with some of these things and work out the hybrid version that works for you. But it was yeah. the same for me when I moved to a new city and I was like, oh, I wonder if there's any choirs or anything. And then once you discover a few, you realise there's there's like the huge choir that does massive performances with the full orchestra. There's the chamber choir, there's individual, you know, there's there's opportunities that you can go to. And yeah, it's going to be slightly different than, because I kind of grew up through School of Music as well. Um, but life goes on. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the cakes Adam has made. But mine is a uh, orange cake with some orange buttercream. We decoration a bit on orange and some honeycomb. 
beautiful. I actually love it. I think it's so cute and rustic. It's and very I, nice. I have made a red velvet cake with buttercream and some like hearts in the spirit of Valentine's Day and some pink buttercream. The hearts were meant to be red, but it's fine. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> so thank you so much, Andrew, for coming and chatting to us tonight. I hope we are My friendly pleasure. enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to know the spirit of the orchestra lives on it's still going so strong hopefully it will continue on as the years progress but hopefully we will see you next Friday for our final which is very exciting hopefully we will see some incredible creations it's my sister's birthday next Friday so I will be creating her birthday cake on camera um, <laughs> we don't Amazing. need to add more pressure to it or anything but we're going to just just for the crack you know <laughs> So thank you very much and um, yeah, we'll see you next Friday for some more chat. Okay, see you next Friday. Looking forward to seeing them.